Diabetes Canada 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines, Monitoring Glycemic Control, Chapter 9. My name is Laurie Burrard, and I'm one of the co-authors of this chapter, along with Rick Siemens and Vincent Wu. The key changes from the Clinical Practice Guidelines in 2013 include new information and recommendations on continuous glucose monitoring and flash glucose monitoring. First, let's discuss glycated hemoglobin, or A1c. It is a reliable measure of mean plasma glucose over three to four months, and it is known that the majority of contribution comes from the previous one month. It is a valuable indicator of treatment effectiveness. It is measured at least every three months when glycemic targets are not being met or treatments are being adjusted. And it may possibly be measured every six months if treatment is stable and the individual is meeting their glycemic targets. Previously discussed in the 2013 clinical practice guidelines was a proposed change in A1C reporting. Currently in Canada, we use NGSP, which is the National Glycohemoglobin Standardization Program. This means that A1C is reported in percentages. There has been some discussion about moving internationally to using the IFCC units, which is the International Federation of Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicine, which reports A1C in millimoles per mole. Currently, Canada is continuing to report in NGSP units of percentage, and there is no indication that we'll, we will be switching in the near future. However, if you're interested in understanding the conversion, you can see the calculation of IFCC from NGSP is included at the bottom of this slide. When we are considering A1C with our individuals in terms of how they're doing for glycemic control, it's important that we understand that there are factors that can affect their A1C levels. On this slide, you can see a chart that helps us understand, in the very left column, factors that affect A1C in general. In the second column, you can see that there are factors that are specifically thought to increase their A1C. And then in the third column, you can see factors that are thought to decrease A1C levels. And the last column is the concept of variable change in A1C. There are many things on this slide that may never be part of the individuals with diabetes that you care for. However, when you are assessing their overall glycemic status, it is important to recognize that if they have any of these comorbid conditions or are on any of these medications or have any of these issues in terms of past medical history, that you may not, in fact, be dealing with the true A1C on the lab report that you have. Self-monitoring of blood glucose, SMBG, is a tool not an intervention. And it is very important that we teach patients to monitor with meaning. Monitoring with meaning really is about ensuring that self-monitoring of blood glucose is accompanied by structured educational programs to facilitate behavior change as we know this results in improved outcomes. So in order to facilitate that, it is very important that we teach patients how and when to perform self-monitoring of blood glucose, how to record the results in a manner in which it's easy to interpret patterns, the meaning of their various blood glucose levels, and also how behavior and action can affect their SMBG results. We have been working very hard for the last 10 years to encourage individualization in terms of frequency of self-monitoring of blood glucose. Diabetes Canada has developed two tools to provide guidance on appropriate situations for SMBG utilization. There is an interactive app on the guidelines.diabetes.ca website that allows you to put in your patient profile, current medication, and a few other information about their diabetes that will help you to populate a suggested self-monitoring of blood glucose pattern for them to be able to use this information to adequately achieve their glycemic control. There is also a similar version for people living with diabetes to make sure that they can understand 
how and when they should be monitoring their blood sugars. In 2011, we developed the Self-Monitoring of Blood Glucose Recommendation Tool for healthcare providers. This is a paper-based tool that's still available as one of the appendices in the Clinical Practice Guidelines document. And this was utilizing a stoplight system. So green was when regular SMBG should be performed and was required. Yellow was when increased frequency of self-monitoring of blood glucose might be required in people with diabetes. And red was when daily self-monitoring of blood glucose was not usually required for the person with diabetes. And in each of these tables, you can see the situation and the subsequent self-monitoring recommendations in order to achieve the glycemic targets for that patient, or perhaps to ensure safety in terms of things such as prevention of hypoglycemia. And of note that regular self-monitoring of blood glucose is not recommended in people who are achieving their glycemic targets on behavioral interventions alone or in those who have prediabetes. More recently, we have seen an uptake of continuous glucose monitoring systems, CGM, what we understand is this is a system that measures glucose concentration in the interstitial fluid. There are two types of CGM systems available. There are real-time or personal, which means that the individual using the device can continuously see their blood glucose levels on the display. Or there's blinded professional versions, which means that there is no reporting of the blood glucose to the person wearing them. And only when the device is brought into the healthcare professional office, they're downloaded, and then there can be a discussion of the interpretation of the graphs and treatment changes can be made. We do know that real-time CGM has been shown to reduce A1C, especially in adults and children with type 1 diabetes with or without CSII, so insulin pump therapy, and in adults with type 2 diabetes. Real-time CGM also reduces the time spent in hypoglycemia. It is important to understand that successful use of CGM is truly dependent on adherence with the duration of time it is to be used. Flash glucose monitoring has been recently introduced in Canada. And this too measures plasma glucose in the interstitial fluid. However, the blood glucose values are only displayed when the sensor is flashed with a reader device on demand. Once this has occurred, you will see a plot profile of the last eight hours. The sensors are worn for 14 days. And the evidence has been produced that shows that the utilization of flash glucose monitoring can decrease time spent in hypoglycemia in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Chapter 9, Monitoring Glycemic Control, therefore has these following recommendations. Recommendation 1. For most individuals with diabetes, A1C should be measured approximately every three months to ensure that glycemic goals are being met or maintained. In some circumstances, such as when significant changes are made to therapy or during pregnancy, it is appropriate to check A1C more frequently. Testing at least every six months should be performed in adults during periods of treatment and healthy behavior stability when glycemic targets have been consistently achieved. Recommendation two, for individuals using insulin more than once a day, SMBG should be used as an essential part of diabetes self-management and should be undertaken at least three times per day and include pre and postprandial measurements. For individuals with type 2 diabetes on once daily insulin, in addition to non-insulin antihyperglycemic agents, testing at least once a day at variable times is recommended. Recommendation three, for individuals with type 2 diabetes not receiving insulin therapy, frequency of SMBG recommendation should be individualized depending on the type of antihyperglycemic agents, level of glycemic control, and risk of hypoglycemia. When glycemic control is not being achieved, self-monitoring of blood glucose should be instituted and should include periodic pre- and postprandial measurements and training of healthcare providers and people with diabetes on methods to modify health behaviors and antihyperglycemic medications in response to SMBG values. If achieving glycemic targets or receiving antihyperglycemic medications not associated with hypoglycemia, infrequent SMBG is appropriate. 
Recommendation 4. In many situations for all individuals with diabetes, more frequent SMBG testing should be undertaken to provide information needed to make health behavior or antihyperglycemic medication adjustments required to achieve desired glycemic targets and avoid risk of hypoglycemia. Recommendation 5. In people with type 1 diabetes who have not achieved their glycemic target, real-time CGM may be offered to improve glycemic control and reduce duration of hypoglycemia in individuals who are willing and able to use these devices on a nearly daily basis. Recommendation 6. Flash glucose monitoring may be offered to people with diabetes to decrease time spent in hypoglycemia. Recommendation 7. In order to ensure accuracy of blood glucose meter readings, meter results should be compared with laboratory measurements of simultaneous venous fasting plasma glucose and 8-hour fast at least annually and when A1C does not match glucose meter readings. Recommendation 8. Individuals with type 1 diabetes should be instructed to perform ketone testing during periods of acute illness accompanied by elevated blood glucose. When preprandial blood glucose levels remain greater than 14.0 millimoles per liter, or in the presence of symptoms of DKA, blood ketone testing methods may be preferred over urine ketone testing as they have been associated with earlier detection of ketosis and response to treatment. The key messages from Chapter 9 Monitoring Glycemic Control are as follows. A1C is a valuable indicator of glycemic treatment effectiveness and should be measured at least every three months when glycemic targets are not being met and when antihyperglycemic therapy is being adjusted. In some circumstances, such as when significant changes are made to therapy or during pregnancy, it is appropriate to check A1C more frequently. Awareness of all measures of glycemia, self-monitored blood glucose results, including SMBG, flash glucose monitoring, continuous glucose monitoring, and A1C provides the best information to assess glycemic control. SMBG, flash glucose monitoring, and continuous glucose monitoring should not be viewed as glucose-lowering interventions, but rather as aids to assess the effectiveness of glucose-lowering interventions and to prevent and detect hypoglycemia. Timing and frequency of self-monitored blood glucose may be determined individually based on the type of diabetes, the type of anti-hyperglycemic treatment prescribed, the need for information about blood glucose levels, and the individual's capacity to use the information from testing to modify healthy behaviors or self-adjust anti-hyperglycemic agents. Self-monitoring of blood glucose, flash glucose monitoring, and continuous glucose monitoring linked with structured educational and therapeutic programs designed to facilitate behavior change can improve blood glucose levels and prevent hypoglycemia. Chapter 9, Monitoring Glycemic Control, Key Messages for People with Diabetes. A1C is a measurement of your average blood glucose control for the last two to three months. Approximately 50% of the value comes from the last 30 days. You should have your A1C measured every three months when your blood glucose targets are not being met or when you are making changes to your diabetes management. In some circumstances, such as when significant changes are made to your glucose lowering therapy or during pregnancy, your healthcare provider may check your A1C more frequently. Checking your blood glucose with a glucose meter, also known as self-monitoring of blood glucose, or using a flash glucose meter, FGM, or continuous glucose monitor, CGM, will determine if you have high or low blood glucose at that time, show how your health behaviors and diabetes medications affect your blood glucose levels, help you and your diabetes healthcare team make lifestyle and medication changes that will improve your blood glucose. Discuss with your diabetes healthcare team how often you should check your blood glucose level. 
More information on the guidelines can be found at guidelines.diabetes.ca. You are able to access the full chapter as well as the additional slide sets and the quick access to the healthcare provider tools and resources. You may download the app for ease of access from Google Play or the App Store to be able to access tools, videos, slides, and the chapters. The Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines will be available at guidelines.diabetes.ca for healthcare providers, and at diabetes.ca will be information for people with diabetes. And if you have any questions, you should call 1-800-BANTING.